Save us, Lord our God, and gather us together from the nations that we may proclaim your holy name and glory in your praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You may have noticed it is rather cold in church. Unfortunately, there was a problem with the heating, which Neville has rectified. The heating is on, but unfortunately it didn't come on until about half past nine, so apologies. It's fascinating watching everybody singing. <laughs> uh, you will no doubt know that um, there has been a change in the guidance around mask wearing. Face coverings are no longer mandatory in any setting, but um, they may be recommended in enclosed or crowded spaces and particularly where you come into contact with people who you don't normally meet. So as always, we would ask you to please be sensitive to the concerns of those around you. And at this time, communion will continue in one kind, uh, and that's predominantly because the concern around sharing common cup lies heavily with the, the priest who consumes what is left um, when the chalice uh, is, is consumed at the end. So. Um, I think that's what we need to say before Mass begins, other than to say Father Michael is shooting off this morning to St. Modwin's, so after he has preached. So let's take a moment of quiet before uh, we begin to invite God into our hearts and our minds to give thanks for this place, for the opportunity to meet together, and to place ourselves before him.
we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief, shine into the hearts of all your people, and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. This is the word of the Lord. Be with you. And also with you. 
hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah. Then he began to say to those in the synagogue, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me the, this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Something only a few of you probably will have noticed. Uh, the gospel reading we just heard is not what was on last week's bulletin. That's because there are alternatives for this Sunday and rather than repeat this morning's gospel on Wednesday which is the feast of the presentation when Jesus as a baby was taken to the temple and acclaimed as the light of the world, I've chosen the gospel that goes on from last week's. Uh, I think our website or our live streaming still has an old reference on it, but I don't think that will cause a great problem for anybody. The hymns at this service do actually have some uh, relationship with the presentation all about light and coming into the temple and that sort of thing. Right, sermon proper begins. Last week, Father Duncan preached on St. Paul's description of the church as the body of Christ, in which the members have different functions, but work together for the good of the whole body, the common good. Junior church members came in with pictures of hands, feet, ears, and eyes, which they had made as they thought about St. Paul's picture, church as the body of Christ. St. Paul lists nine ministries within the church, gifts people have received, functions to which God has appointed them. He starts with those he regards as the higher gifts, being an apostle or prophet or teacher. At the end of the list comes speaking in tongues and interpreting what is said in tongues. We have to think how to apply St. Paul's description to today's church. Take prophets, for example. Old Testament prophets probably come to mind. Isaiah, Jeremiah, for example, or Elijah and Elisha, who were prophets without books being named after them. But that's not what St. Paul has in mind. In the early Christian communities at Corinth and elsewhere, there were Christians who had specific messages for the church in that time and place. 
These are the prophets St. Paul has in mind. And that corresponds to the function of the Old Testament prophets. They delivered God's message to the people of their day, calling Israel to return to the Lord, to give up unjust practices, and so on. Predicting the future was a secondary matter and is often the result of the interpretation we put on their message. In my former parish in Yorkshire, there was a very godly man called Charles, as there is here. <laughs> he was committed to the church and had a clear perception of how people and organizations work. When he spoke, if you were wise, you listened. My clergy colleague said to me once, Charles is a prophet. In this sense, many churches, ours included, have prophets in their midst. Not that everything they say is a word of prophecy. It's a role or ministry they exercise occasionally without maybe knowing about it, just as people sometimes teach or administer or give pastoral care in particular situations. On Saturday, a number of us will attend an away day to think about what the mission of St. John's is, how we reach people with the gospel in our present circumstances. It may be that words of prophecy are spoken there. As I mentioned earlier, this week's gospel reading follows straight on from last week's. Jesus is in the synagogue at Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He reads from the Old Testament prophet, Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Isaiah was not talking about himself. He puts these words on the lips of someone else, probably the servant of the Lord, to whom other passages in Isaiah's writings refer. Isaiah doesn't identify this servant figure. But Jesus applies the words to himself. He is the appointed and anointed servant of God. The words Messiah and Christ mean the anointed one. Today's gospel reading begins with Jesus saying, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's a massive claim. At first it seems to go down well with those in the synagogue, but do they believe it? He's one of their own. Who is he claiming to be? In the absence of faith, Jesus performs no healings or other miracles amongst them. They quickly turn against him. They drive him out of the town and up a hill, a foreshadowing of his crucifixion on Calvary Hill outside Jerusalem. But, as another Gospel writer, John, would say, his hour has not yet come, and he escapes. There's also a foreshadowing of the Gospel of spreading beyond the Jewish world, as Jesus gives the examples of Elijah and Elisha, who faced opposition in Israel, but worked miracles among Gentiles. If we put ourselves in the position of the synagogue attenders, the question arises of whether we ever reject those who are speaking a word of God's truth to us, because it does not fit in with our assumptions. Sometimes God challenges us to do things differently or to widen our faith. Or we could think of ourselves as people charged with spreading the gospel of Jesus, the servant Messiah. If we seek to reach only people like ourselves, we're missing so much. God's love is for all, whether they live in leafy suburbs 
back-to-back terraces, countryside hamlets, or new developments. The New Testament reading today is St. Paul's inspired passage about love. It's often read at weddings, but it's not primarily about marital love. It's about God's love, which is shown in Christ and in which all the members of the body participate. That's the theory. We have to realize it in practice. Christian love is the goal towards which all the ministries in the church are directed. Prophecy, teaching, service, and so on. Love seeks to include all, regardless of background, achievements, or failings. It gives and forgives. The time will come when there is no need for the various ministries. We will be abiding in God's love forever. Amen. We stand to declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, <clears throat> in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church. We give thanks that we are part of a global communion of Christians spanning the world. And today we remember our brothers and sisters in the diocese, in the church of the province of the Indian Ocean. Father, may Christians throughout the world together proclaim afresh the gospel to the people of the places they serve. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Father, closer to home in our own diocese, we particularly pray for uh, our cathedral church who are currently running uh, a living in love and faith course, a course which is being attended by many dozens of people. We pray for them and we pray for peace, good listening and new understanding. And we pray for learning from each other. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, in our own parish, we pray for our hospital. We give thanks for the National Health Service and for all those who work in our hospitals, doctors' surgeries, 
and clinics. We pray for those who are working under difficult conditions at a time when COVID continues to mean restrictions are in place in healthcare settings. We give thanks for all those who so diligently strive to meet the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. We remember before you those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. And in particular, we call to mind Joan Palmer, Russell, Jean Hodgkins, Father Timothy, Brenda, Jim Deakin, Sue Gould, Maureen Smithard, Blair, Ellie Parton, Betty Bourne, John, Ian, Peter, Maria, Andrew, John, Karen and Paul Johnson, Freddie Lambert, Felicity, Brian Gorwood, Norma, Rose Kiersey, Pat Warrender, and Michael Gould. Heavenly Father, be with them in their time of need. Let them know your loving and healing touch. Lord, in your mercy. We remember those who have gone before us. And in particular, we pray for those who have recently died. John Brown, Bill Rowe, Molly Orton, and Lillian Hall. And we remember those whose year's mind falls at this time. Mabel Robin Rawlinson, Tom Goodall, Desdemona Schenk, Adam Johns, Arthur Shepherd, Maxine Rowley, Norman Savage, Audrey Medhurst, Harry Gould, Roland Miller, John Aldrich, and Nellie Lake. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. We join our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin, with all the saints in heaven, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, man, swimming, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Would you please stand? Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, be pleased with the gifts we bring to your altar and make them the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the May joy, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise.
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Set to him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and be As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. 
The body of Christ.
Happy are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are the lowly, they shall inherit the land. Let us pray. Generous Lord, in word and Eucharist we have proclaimed the mystery of your love. Help us so to live out our days that we may be signs of your wonders in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit, to live in the world, to praise The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Do sit comfortably for a moment. Wednesday, um, uh, for the presentation, the church will be in white, so if anybody can just give a quick hand at the end of the service to swap the altar front, I'd be very grateful because Father Michael's not here. It's quite tricky to do on your on my own. Um, so uh, the funeral of John Brown is on Wednesday, the 2nd of February at 12 noon here in church, uh, and Mother's Union will not meet um, that day. So Wednesday is the Feast of the Presentation, as Father Michael mentioned, uh, and Mass will be at 9.30. Uh, also, as Father Michael mentioned, next Saturday is uh, our away day. Um, very importantly, um, we have assigned some time for prayer in advance of the away day, and there will be uh, half an hour of prayer at 7 o'clock on Thursday in Red Lion House. Also in Red Lion House, uh, a week tomorrow, on Monday the 7th of February, Deanery Synod meets at uh, 7.30 p.m. Um, and coffee is served after church today, so it'll be lovely to see you there. Hopefully it'll be warm. Um, it's really interesting. It takes about an hour and a half to warm church up when the heating comes on, so just as we leave today, it'll be nice and cosy. Anyway, there you go. Right, we're going to sing our final hymn, hymn 178.